Hello and welcome back to my channel. It is me, Allie. In today's video, yes, I am rocking a pink wig right now. I got this off of Amazon because A, I'm obsessed with wigs. I think that they are so much fun. And B, today's video is a Valentine's Day inspired treats video. So what a better time to rock some pink hair. I've been trying to make it work for the past like 10 minutes and we're getting there. It's a little frustrating. <gasps> But you know, we're gonna make it work. Um, I'm definitely playing around. Really, Jax? Really, every time I try to film. Every time I try to film. Doesn't matter. Anyways, if I look strange to you, it's just a wig. I'm just having a little bit of fun with it. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a bunch of different DIY Pinterest inspired, Valentine's Day inspired treats. I am not claiming to have created any of these recipes on my own. I found them all on Pinterest and I thought it would be fun to do a compilation video of all of these different delicious treats. Let me know in the comments below what your absolute favorite treat is. Mine at the current moment is just like a homemade delicious chocolate chunk cookie or a donut. I can definitely get down with homemade chocolate chunk cookies or donuts pretty much any day of the week. If you guys have any other question concerns after watching this video, just ask them in the comments below. And without further ado, let's get on into it. For these Rice Krispie Treat hearts, you're going to need to either make your own Rice Krispie Treats at home or just buy the box like I'm doing. It is so much easier and they taste really, really great. I am taking four of the little mini ones, kind of squishing them and pushing them together. Then I'm placing them inside of the microwave for just about 12 seconds to make them a little bit more moldable. Once they come out of the microwave, you can go ahead and take your heart-shaped cookie cutter or any cookie cutter that represents Valentine's Day for you and just press down and of course do not waste the excess. Just squish it together again in your hands and you can make multiple of these hearts in multiple different shapes and or sizes. To make these a little bit more Valentine's Day-esque, we are going to be decorating them. You can melt down some white frosting or some white chocolate. It is completely your preference. I prefer white frosting for Rice Krispie treats. That's again, just my preference. You can use either or. And you just wanna take your Krispies, dip them into the white frosting or the white chocolate, and then immediately upon taking them out of the chocolate or the frosting, you wanna add your sprinkles or your non-pareilles or whatever you want to decorate. If you wait too long, the frosting or the chocolate will start to harden and the sprinkles most likely will not attach. The sprinkles that I'm using here in this clip is from Wilton. I got it at Target. I believe it was like $5, pretty inexpensive. You get six different compartments of six different Valentine's Day inspired sprinkles, so it makes it really fun. And again, as you guys are looking in this clip, I waited a little too long to put the sprinkles on for this one and the frosting already started to harden. So make sure immediately upon taking your crispy out of the frosting or the chocolate, you drizzle on your sprinkles. And that is pretty much all there is to it for this first sweet treat. I highly suggest this one if you are in a hurry, if you need to make a treat in a very short amount of time, I would highly, highly suggest this one right here because you could probably complete this entire process from start to finish within 10 to 15 minutes. And they taste really good and they're really beautiful, very aesthetically pleasing and perfect for the holiday. This video is all about convenience. For our next recipe, we're going to need some sugar cookies. You can make your own sugar cookie batter at home, or you can just buy the break apart ones you can get at the market like I am doing here. While your cookies are baking in the oven, you'll need three different kinds of fondant. I actually made this fondant 
from scratch off of a recipe that I found online. It is marshmallow fondant, so I will link that recipe in the description below. You want to break apart a couple of the pieces of the fondant in whatever colors you choose. I am doing pink, purple, and white here because I think those colors really represent Valentine's Day. And you kind of just want to move them and groove them and squish them and mold them together. And then you want to take a rolling pin and just roll them out until you get this really awesome marble effect. The final step to completing these cookies is to take your fondant and then take a cookie cutter. I'm using one that I believe it's called scalloped edges. When you get kind of like that ruffled effect, whatever it is called, I'm using a circular one that's a little bit smaller than the actual sugar cookies themselves. When your sugar cookies have completely cooled down, you want to take a little bit of frosting. This is going to act as the glue to hold the fondant on. And then you want to take your cutout fondant pieces and place them on top of your sugar cookies. These came out so freaking cute. And ta-da, your very own bougie looking cookies. In reality, these only cost about $5 to make for the dozen. I feel like if you went to a really nice pastry shop, they would charge about $2 for just one of these cookies. They look so adorable. They're extremely delicious if you like sweet things. I just, I can't get over how cute these came out. I'm like so proud of myself. I hope that you guys like them as much as I do. We are back to convenience. For this next recipe, the Kit Kat cake. By the way, this is my favorite recipe I have ever made. I am obsessed with the end result. For this recipe, you're going to need two tiers of a flavored cake, whatever flavor you choose. I chose strawberry because it's very Valentine's Day-esque. You can make homemade strawberry cake from scratch at home, or you can just buy the Betty Crocker boxed cake mix like I did here. I think it was like $1.25, and it is delicious. I've never had the boxed strawberry cake before. It is so good. Once your cakes have cooled completely, you just want to take a knife to the top of them to level them out and flatten them out. And then you just want to place the bottom portion on top of the cake stand, add a bunch of frosting to the center, place the top part face down, and then you just want to basically frost the entire cake. Don't worry about being very neat for this part. Pretty much every single square inch of this cake is going to be covered with either M&Ms or Kit Kat. So I just took my frosting and I melted it down in the microwave for about 10 seconds to 25 seconds until it was a little bit easier to work with and I just poured it all over the top and then I took a little spatula and I went all around the perimeter of this cake. Again, it does not need to be neat. We're going to be completely covering it with candy so you won't see any of this frosting when the cake is all said and done. Now it is time to add the abundant amount of Kit Kats to the perimeter of your cake. Just take your Kit Kats, break them apart so they're long rectangular pieces, and place them on your cake. That's really all there is to it. You just want to place them on the frosting and then they will stick. Also, I know that I'm making this video semi-early, we're still in January, but I am six and a half months pregnant and I'm going for my gestational diabetes test next week. I believe it's next week, so I'm trying to get all of my sweets in now in case I can't eat them for the remainder of my pregnancy. Once you are done with the first layer, you want to start with your second layer. This is where I took a knife and I basically just cut the Kit Kats in half. I used the mini ones for this one and I'm placing them all along the perimeter of the top of the cake. And don't worry about that annoying little cut level. We're going to be covering that with ribbon once this is all done so you won't even see it. Also, I forgot to mention, make sure your Kit Kats go up at least one solid inch above your cake because that is what's going to hold all of the M&Ms in place. So like I mentioned earlier, you're going to take some ribbon of your choice. I found this really cute ribbon that has hearts all over it at Target and you just want to wrap it around the cake wherever that line that divides your two sets of Kit Kats goes. 
And last but not least, pour in all the M&Ms. Just pour them on in there, stack them up high, and make them overflow. Proud baker moment right here. I've always seen these cakes all over Pinterest and I always thought these seem way too complicated and I'm very happy to say that this was so, so easy. Like honestly, so easy and the end result speaks for itself or at least I think it speaks for itself. I think it looks really, really adorable. I'm telling you if you make one of these and bring it to a party, it is going to be a highlight of conversation. Also, a really cool thing about this cake and most of the treats that I'm showing you in this video is that they are completely customizable. This next sweet treat, the cinnamon roll hearts, are hands down the easiest sweet treat of this video. For this, you will need some Pillsbury Grands cinnamon rolls. These are the ones that peel apart. If you don't have Pillsbury, just get one that peels apart. You want to peel them apart until you get one long strip, and then you want to curl the two edges in until you make a heart-like shape. In order to make that heart-like shape, I'm just pinching the bottom a little bit to make the point of the heart. And then you just want to bake these in the oven. Before you place these in the oven, make sure to get a toothpick and just put it straight through to keep it in place. Of course, you want to make sure that you're removing that toothpick before you place it in the oven. And then you just want to bake it according to whatever the package says. Once everything has baked, add on your icing immediately. You want this to melt down really nicely. I always add my icing into a plastic bag to make it a little bit easier to work with. So I just added mine into a plastic bag, cut a small tip off of the edge, and then I drizzled on all of that delicious icing. And this is what the final product looks like. So cute, so delicious, so sweet, so cheap, so easy, so fabulous. Next up we have the Valentine's Day Sweet Dipped Oreos. So I know everybody pretty much knows how to do these already. They've been around forever, but I did want to include it in this video because again, I wanted this to be more of like a collective video of different kinds of treats that you can make for Valentine's Day. So they're pretty self-explanatory. You just take your Oreos, you dip them in some melted chocolate of your choice. I chose white because I thought that it was the most Valentine's day -y type chocolate out there and then I just took some pink chocolate or strawberry chocolate or just dyed white chocolate and I drizzled it across the top. The last thing that I did was just took a little heart sprinkle and I placed it right into the center and there you have it. Again, I know that people have been doing these for years but I just wanted to include it in the video. Also, let me know if you've tried these Love Comma Oreos Limited Edition Oreos. They're kind of wild. I expected them to be like regular Oreos and you bite into them and the cream is very tangy. They're good. They're just a little bit wild. And last but not least, we are going to be making my absolute favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe. I got this recipe off of BuzzFeed Tasty and I will link it in the description below. There are no words. Just honestly the best chewy chocolate chip cookies you will ever have in your life. Very standard ingredients like butter, sugar, brown sugar, egg, vanilla, extract, baking soda, flour. Again, I will put the full ingredients list in the description below along with the recipe. I cut mine in half because there are only two people that live in my house, just me and Adam, and I didn't want to be wasteful. But with cutting the recipe in half, I still had enough to make 12 cookies and they are so good. The big thing to mention about these cookies, they do have to chill in the refrigerator for at least like two to five hours. I prefer overnight, so I made these the night before and then I just bake them in the oven the next day and honestly, 
so good <laughs> so so good you can add in chocolate chips white chocolate chips dark chocolate chips I added some M&Ms into them to make them a little bit more Valentine's Day e they're just they're so good that's it they're wonderful After your dough has chilled for a couple of hours or overnight, you just want to roll them into tiny little balls. You can make these a little bit bigger, but it will take a little bit longer to bake. And then you just want to bake them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. And this is what they look like. Oh my god. If somebody gives me this for Valentine's Day, I will be the happiest person in the entire world. Such an inexpensive gift to give to your loved ones, a partner, a friend, a family member, or just yourself. You will not be disappointed. I promise you that. And that is it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And please subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and you enjoy my videos. I love you guys to the moon and back. Thank you guys so much for all your support. It means the absolute world to me. I hope that you're having an amazing day. And I look forward to talking to you all soon. Bye, guys.